There are two sorts of covalently bonded compounds. First of all, the macromolecules like diamond or sand. And these have a low volatility since their atoms are strongly bonded in a giant lattice. Compare this to the simple molecules, such as water, carbon dioxide and sugar in a can of Coca-Cola. These are volatile due to relatively weak intermolecular forces. Gasoline is also a simple molecule, as is tetraphosphorus decoxide, the smoke in smoke grenades. Another simple molecule is methane, found when you're nervous. Arrange the following simple molecules from lowest boiling point to highest. Anything with a low boiling point, uh, it's going to be volatile. It turns into a gas quite easily at low temperatures. And note that each of them have approximately the same molar mass. Now, why is that important? Well, it's to try to make this uh, a fair experiment, if you will. If they were to have a higher molar mass, that means they would have more electrons, which would mean more London dispersion forces and an elevated boiling point. And so that would take away the point of the question. Uh, whatever has more electrons has a higher boiling point, generally. But they've all got the same electrons. Hydrogen bonds are the strongest of the three intermolecular forces applicable to this question, followed by dipole-dipole, and finally the weakest, London dispersion forces. Let me draw out the molecules. Argon, simple monatomic gas. Carbon dioxide is linear. Propane is pretty linear as well. It's got a couple of little kinks in it. Nitrogen dioxide is not uh, expected to be drawn in IB because it uh, has a weird Lewis structure. See that lone electron? But it is a bent molecule. Ethanol is just regular drinking alcohol. Other alcohols you can drink, but they're all fatal. And ethanol, well, that's the chemical that ethanol turns into once you metabolize it. That's why your wee smells weird in the morning and you have a terrific hangover. Ethanol. Quite poisonous. So looking at hydrogen bonds first. Remember, hydrogen bonds happen when a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine are bonded to hydrogen. It's the strongest of the intermolecular forces. So argon, carbon dioxide, propane, nitrogen dioxide, it doesn't apply. But in ethanol, there it is, the intermolecular force. And so that gives it the highest boiling point of them all, 78 degrees centigrade. Ethanol, no hydrogen bonds present. Hydrogen is not attached to that oxygen. So what about the dipole-dipole attractions? Well, not argon, that has no permanent dipole, and carbon dioxide has no molecular dipole, nor does propane, since the electronegativity of the carbon and the hydrogens are the same in propane. Nitrogen dioxide does have a dipole, though, a permanent one. Oxygen's a little more electronegative than nitrogen making that attraction between the molecules. And ethanol also has a dipole. The oxygen-carbon bond produces a dipole in the molecule. And so there's some dipole-dipole attractions in ethanol. So those are slightly weaker than hydrogen bonds, so you'd expect the boiling points to be less than 78, which indeed they are. Next up are the London dispersion forces. So the top three must have them. Now propane and carbon dioxide is more of a sausage shape, high surface area, and so sticky sausage. There's lots of contact between those molecules. And the argon is more spherical, non-sticky balls. So the spheres have a very relatively small point of contact, and so they're not that attractive with London dispersion forces. So argon's going to have the lowest boiling point. 
and carbon dioxide and propane are the missing two. Their sausagey shape gives them more London dispersion forces and a slightly higher boiling point. 